Nigerians are ushering the new year on a note of prayers and thanksgiving. President Buhari in a nationwide broadcast says government's focus will be devoted to addressing the country's huge infrastructural deficit this new year. Nigerian Air Force releases postings and redeployment to 41 senior officers. On Good Morning Nigeria today, our focus is on President Muhammad Buhari's January 1st nationwide broadcast to Nigerians. All right, let's begin with the Muhammad Buhari administration, which came into power two and a half years ago, riding on the crest of change, which filled so many expectations from Nigerians. But over the halfway mark, of the regime is a mixed bag of success and challenges. While the administration has, however, recorded major landmarks, especially the success in the war against Boko Haram, his aggressive fight against corruption, and of course, successfully pulling out the uh, pulling uh, the economy out of recession towards the end of the la uh, last uh, outgoing year, the part of steady growth and also a gradual stabilization of the Naira. Now, according to the figures from the National Bureau of Statistics, uh, the economy, uh, uh, blessing if you recall, uh, of course, uh, has been on the path of steady, steady growth. Yes. And that's uh, since, of course, uh, the second quarter of this year, after it contracted, last you know, year, well, <laughs> <laughs> last year, that's 2017, of course, uh, after contracting for five consecutive quarters. Now, this economic uh, uh, expert say is very, very remarkable. That's talking about, of course, uh, the, the, the progress and the stability in our economy. You're quite right, Clay. Okay. Now, yeah. it's however must be noted that the administration in the past 30 months has made considerable effort at turning around the economy. Well, the started aspect of creating jobs, looking at entrepreneurship programs here and there. There are also the fight for corruption, as in fighting corruption in all its facets, and looking forward to transforming the economy through agriculture. That is to replace oil and gas as major revenue earner for the nation. Now, talking about agriculture, farmers in different parts of the country are experiencing bumper harvest. Uh, states, of course, uh, we all know, Lagos, Kanu, Kebi, are getting into strategic partnership towards attaining self-sufficiency in rise. And the era of over-dependence on oil for foreign exchange uh, revenue is also gradually waning. I agree with you, Claire. The revolution in rice production, at least we've seen states actually <laughs> having this partnership from the north to the south, southwest, and all the other parts and, of the and, country. And a lot of people are now having the appetite for locally produced well, rice. Well, some of us have always had this appetite for local rice. It's something tasty. <laughs> and actually, you relish the taste uh, from time to time. And each region, each city actually has its own peculiar taste, I must tell you. <laughs> now, the revolution in rice production is particularly heartwarming. Statistics show that uh, Nigeria witnessed bumper food harvests, especially in rice, whose local production continues to rise significantly, with states like Ebony, Kebi, Kano, Ogun State. And as a matter of fact, the Food and Agricultural Organization, FAO, said the number of Nigerians facing insecurity now in the north is dropped by half last year. All right. Now, not just in the agricultural sector, the government says its social investment program, that's SIP, rolled out across the states currently, uh, of course, uh, is... Uh well, the statistics we have is that 5.2 million primary school children in over 28,200 schools in 19 states are being fed on a daily basis, while 200,000 unemployed graduates were also enlisted into the NPAR job scheme now. Well, the reforms are also in the place for creation of a crop of entrepreneurs. Uh, they are drastically cutting unemployment in Nigeria, Mm -hmm. is also rising at the 24th place on the World Bank's ease of doing business ranking, earning the country a place on the list of top 10 reformers in the world. 
on some of the giant strides of the administration and focus in the new year were captured in President Mohamed Buhari's speech just uh, a while ago. And I'm sure you're looking forward to some of those changes. Indeed, uh, let's say now, let's be specific. President uh, Mohamed Buhari, of course, uh, in, in, in the broadcast, that's in the 25 minutes long broadcast, which uh, was uh, devoted mainly to efforts of his administration uh, to address the country's huge infrastructure deficit, said that the government has set an ambitious target, adding that in the next few years, Nigerian cities across all geopolitical zones or ge geographical zones will be linked by functional modern rail systems. Now, this is hot, hot warming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure looking forward to having train rides here yes. and there. Now, the president also announced that the Federal Road Maintenance Agency, FEMA, has been charged with a 12-week rapid intervention in road repairs to cover 44 roads in all geopolitical zones adding that last December the country achieved about 5,155 megawatts of power delivered to customers. Now the highest level ever recorded, according to the broadcast. All right. Now, why have these notable achievements that we've ruled out so far not reflecting in the prices of major commodities in the market. I'm sure this is what concerns, of course, uh, uh, the, the, the category of people we call, you know, the masses. We, like, we masses. We masses, uh, you know. <laughs> now, the market continue, of course, uh, to hit the rules that market prices by the day. So when will the noticeable improvement in the economy impact on the living condition of the people? Now, very, very vital questions uh, we will be asking on today's edition of the program as usual we don't have the answers uh, we'll have a special guest who will be beginning the new year with us of course uh, on this uh, first edition first day of the working week first day of the month first day in the new, new year. year let's welcome all of you and good morning nigeria from the of course uh, stable of africa's largest tv network the Nigerian Television Authority. I am Claire Adilabu Abdul Razak. My name is Blessing Abu. I joined Claire in welcoming you to the program. This first day, like she has ruled out, we're actually glad you could join us. It's the first day in the brand new week, in a brand new month, in a brand new year. Happy New Year to every one of you. Let's hope all the good tidings you prayed for into this day will come to pass. Okay. Just work at them. Now, in the course of the program, we shall bring to you our companion segment. As aside the discussion, now taking a look at the president's uh, broadcast this morning, which by now, you know, we'll take a look at our newspapers. We'll look uh, into business. We'll take a look at sports, as well as foreign and entertainment news. But right now, let's kick up with the news. And Anne Jibuna, as our guide, is looking forward to this brand new year, too, with all our smiles. Good, good morning to you, and Happy New Year. Thing. Good morning. Certainly, it's a good year. Good morning. Good to see you, Claire, and a blessing. Good morning, Nigeria. Happy New Year. Here's today's news. Far-reaching measures have been announced by the federal government towards making what it calls significant inroads in ad advancing critical rail, road and power infrastructure projects aimed at addressing huge infrastructure deficits in the country. President Mohamed Buhari, who made this known in a nationwide broadcast to usher in the new year 2018, said he is determined more than ever to serve Nigeria to the best of his ability. The Abuja-Kaduna route will be boosted by additional rolling stock next Thursday and will be able to handle one million commuters annually. By the end of 2021, the two ends will be joined so that we will have standard gauge railway across the main north-south trading route. It was a moment of excitement for Nigerians as many thronged churches and other places of worship to usher in the new year with different supplications, prayers and promises made by Christians. They expressed hope for a better life in 2018 with much optimism for better lives. Some people prayed for the leaders to ensure that there's grace and wisdom for good governance. 
Now the year 2018 for Nigeria is a year that we're going to see new things. I'm expecting so much supernatural strength, supernatural supply, supernatural ability. Well, yesterday was the eve of 2018 and Christian worshippers in various churches all over the world observed the last Sunday service of the year 2017. Correspondent Victor Azu visited some churches here in Abuja from where he reports on the new commitment to the teachings of God undertaken by worshippers. God who has brought us this far. Uh, we continue to be with us. This is a time that we all be saying Ebenezer. God thus far, the Lord has brought us. We are very impatient in our country, Nigeria. We wish our leaders evil. We don't have patience. We don't pray for our nation. For those who are still in faith, who live according to the scripture. Motorists in Abuja are heaving a sigh of relief that better days are ahead as they are driving in and out of filling stations in the new year 2018. Rather. Our correspondent Lydia Sampson visited some filling stations and reports that it is same, the same story of respite across many cities in Nigeria. We are happy that uh, Nigerians are going into the new year uh, with uh, uh, ease. Uh, we know there are a few difficulties in the hinterland, but that also we are continuing massive loading. We loaded the nationwide, the peak we've ever done, over 2,000 trucks. The Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Ogbonaya Onu, has reiterated the federal government's commitment to creating an enabling environment for small and medium enterprises to thrive as a means of tackling the problem of unemployment in Nigeria. The minister said this at an interactive session with graduate entrepreneurs of Technology Incubation Center, NIWI. I'm really very impressed. Uh, we've seen that uh, many of the things we import into the country, there is no reason why we should be doing so. We can produce them here. The Nigerian Air Force has released the postings and redeployment of a total of 41 senior officers comprising 19 air vice marshals, 14 air commodores, four group captains, two wing commanders and three squadron leaders. A statement by the Director of Public Relations and Information, Air Vice Marshal Olato Kumbo Adeshaya, indicates that the postings and redeployments are a fallout of the recent promotion of senior Nigeria Air Force officers through a routine exercise aimed at ensuring that the force is adequately manned for operational efficiency and effectiveness. The Chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, has directed the newly appointed commanders of Nigerian Air Force field units to attend a workshop being organized at the headquarters of the Nigerian Air Force Abuja on the 3rd of January 2018 to equip and remind them of their responsibilities in the discharge of their duties. The newly posted and redeployed senior officers are expected to take over their new officers not later than January 2nd, 2018. Well, that's the news for now. Good morning, Nigeria. We'll be back with Claire and Blessing after this break. Unemployment, notably youth unemployment, teaches strongly in our party's manifesto. We intend to attack the problem frontally through revival of agriculture. k is going a long way. Actually, uh, I bought an acre of land for 60k, like 2012, and presently I have a cassava farm and a yam farm.
reorganized, trained, and fully equipped. We are the new improved Nigeria Police Force. We fight crime. We bust syndicates. Whatever the crime, wherever the hideout, the Nigeria Police Force will get you busted. Stop kidnapping, armed robbery, murder, pipeline vandalism and other criminal activities. Be productive. Be security conscious. Join the police force to secure your life and property. This message is from the Nigeria Police Force, Force Public Relations Department. Culture is beautiful and marriage is blissful. But nowadays, we are indeed raising an eyebrow and asking just how far should culture go in draining our pockets and turning the joy of getting married into a nightmare. Everything is around 11 million 603,000 naira. 24 kubo. What? Our daughters are not for sale. How can custom demand endless payment? Did our ancestors really put down these rules? Yes. Ponder this as you keep a rib cracking date with Professor John Bull this week in the episode titled Not for Sale. Amechi Monago is at his best. Money for opening the door. 500 naira. Zebra Dyer gives him a run for his money. Ah. Kanayo O Kanayo is on fire. This is an opera Lackadaisical. Over and out. Brought to you by Glow. The largest data network. Glow. Unlimited. The time has come for Nigeria to take her rightful place in world sports with the first national grassroots sports festival to discover and prepare sport talent and develop future world champions for Nigeria. The festival date is 3rd to 10th March 2018. In venue is the National Stadium Abuja, packages A and B. This is the opportunity for you to promote your brand through the festival. For broadcast sponsorship, which include live broadcasts, highlight shows, and TV fans show, contact the chairman, chief coordinator, Angelo Peter I. Elosia, or Nick Oyishi. Organizers, Grassroots International Sports Academy and LOP Worldwide Television, endorsed by the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports Development. Broadcast partner, NTA. Welcome back. If you've just joined us, it's New Year's edition of Good Morning Nigeria. We're reaching you live from Abuja, the nation's capital, and this is the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. Let's quickly take a look at the newspaper review. That's coming up next. A brand new, yeah, brand new day, brand new review with Bayer TV. Brand new, Happy, ba brand new Bayer. <laughs> <laughs> Happy New Year to you, Bayer. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Mason. Happy New Year. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. All right. May you well. have a blessed and contentful 2018. Yes. And, 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 blessed. and we say amen to that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Let's start off with uh, the Nigerian pilot. And the Nigerian pilot has on its front page today 2018 leaders preach unity faith in nigeria and of course uh, it has there right there the president broadcast of course uh, which uh, you've just heard uh, uh, a couple of minutes ago the details of this story you can find on page uh, five and you can also see uh, a picture of course uh, of uh, the leaders of our country right there you find a picture of the president uh, the senate president and uh, of course uh, uh, Speaker of the House of Representatives and other governors and, of course, the FCT minister. Now, uh, there is uh, another story uh, just below the picture story. Pressure on Buhari to recall review list. Uh, of course, uh, details uh, of uh, that you can find there. Let me also look at um, 
uh, Independent has at its lead story today, 2018, challenges and expectations. Now, uh, it says that we went through hell in 2017, workers uh, lament. Uh, you can find the details of that on A4. Now, it comes with several riders. Say 4 million Nigerians were thrown out of jobs and um, a number of others there. Blessing. All right. For the New Year, uh, story, the countdown began for so many countries, of course, slightly other than uh, uh, the other parts of the world. So you have the photograph. Fireworks for uh, over Victory Area Abo, Hong Kong, and all the revelers in Melbourne, Australia. That's on the front page of the punch now. Different countries. We also had a countdown here, different parts of the cities for those who were in the churches and all the other worship centers to actually look into that. But just above that, we have uh, Nigerian problems more to do with process than structure, says Buhari. Uh, promises to reduce cost of governance, propel scarcity. And uh, another writer president says importation of rights will stop in 2018. That's a very good news yeah. for New Year, Mosse. Bye. Yes. Well, the New Year celebration started with Pyongyang with fireworks and it went down to uh, Hong Kong and then to Australia, then to New Zealand and to Japan. And then if you are on the street of Ibadan and an old man said to you, Akwino oh, yeah. <laughs> it has double meaning. Exactly. It's Happy New Year. Yeah. It's Akwino Year simply means <laughs> may our hardships <laughs> also <laughs> end. So that is New Year for you. But uh, four months ago, that was the Lunar New Year. And in February 16 will be the Chinese New Year. And in Russia, they have two New Years. Yeah. One is yesterday, another one is coming January 14th. And they greet themselves Novim Godom. Mm. When they are saying uh, New Year, yeah. Japanese also say Shogasu for New Year. <laughs> but the president had his New Year message and he has re emphasized the cardinal principle of his administration infrastructure development, power, role, raid, and housing. However, he also dwell on the concerns of the immediate moment, the, the, the unfortunate queue of the petrol that came at the end of the year. And he has vowed that those who put, punish us by subjecting Nigerians to this harrowing hardship will not go unpunished. So, those who, if it was deliberate, they will have to pay for pays the cost it, it, Nigerians. Enough, but looking at the year that is going, 2017, it has a lot of challenges and a lot of prospects too. Uh, external reserve at the beginning of the year was 26.69 billion. As at December, it is about $38.73 billion. That is an increase of about $10.5 billion. Mm -hmm. Oil uh, closed at $66.8, and we hope that it will increase in the year and it will co continue to boost our economy. Mm -hmm. TSA completely uh, pulled up $3 trillion into the Treasury Savings Account. The economic growth uh, plan was the gr gradual, the, the most uh, the impetus for the economy and it will span from 2017 to 2020. 2020. So okay. if we put our noses to the grinding stone, we hope that we pull the economy out of the recession Completely. that we've done mm -hmm. in, the, in, in, the, uh, uh, mm. in the second quarter of the year and it continue on the asc ascendancy. Uh, that but, is but, as far but, as but, but, but the old did, year you, you and the new year are concerned. We're, we're, well, according to the statistics, we, we are officially out of recession. You, I'm sure you do, you do know that. Yes, we are officially out of recession by the end of the second quarter. But don't forget, the, say, the recession itself commenced gradually in 2014. And you can't come pull out of the recession all of a sudden. The way you went in gradually is the way you get out of it gradually. gradually. So, so it is the impetus. It, it will uh, gradually begin to impact on the people. That's what you mean. But officially yes. we are out. But by your let's, let's keep you on hold on that. There's a story, in fact, it trended yesterday on, on you know, some of the media, but it's here on the front page of the Nigerian pilot, just at the, at the foot uh, yeah. of the paper. Mm -hmm. It's on alleged extortion of motorists, and uh, Brote orders immediate probe of soldiers in, in Bono. And, and yesterday we did, uh, we, we, we saw, you know, uh, a statement, you know, from the Army Public Relations Officer. Yes, the, the allegations are about... Mm -hmm extortion up to about 300,000 mm. being paid by drivers for soldiers to escort them. Mm. You know, one of the challenges we had with the petrol crisis is that all the surrounding nations around Nigeria have sell petrol at a rate higher than Nigeria's rate. Therefore, there is a subtle attempt to smuggle petrol across the borders. Mm. And uh, apparently, apart from the fact that there are security threats, 
Some of these people, from the allegation, were uh, collaborators in this uh, business of uh, of smuggling petrol across the border and other, other foodstuffs. So, and the chief of Amistad has sworn that he's going to see to the end of the those who were involved were brought to book. All right, Bayer, let's uh, take a look at some other stories. Uh, just above the Punch newspaper, just like we've talked about the issue of the economy, external reserves hit uh, $38.7 billion. Yes. It's a rise by 50% in one year. Yes. I think that's some uh, great news. So actually, uh, look at, you've already talked about the oil price at uh, $66. Uh, experts are already commending to that. That is good for Nigeria. Okay, let's take a look at the editorial for the uh, Guardian this uh, morning. If you have the Guardian on the, on the screen, let's take a look at uh, some of those eight things that I've been looking to. Yes, Bayo, you, you have that editorial. Yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, well, the, the Guardian has nominated the Nigerian as its man of the year. This is uh, looking at the resilience of the Nigerian. And how do we really describe Nigeria? He said the Nigerian bear challenges would... Uh, remarkable equanimity. That is to say, there's problems, but Nigeria will bear without complaining. He said they condose what should be condemned and they endure what should be rejected. And therefore, in spite of daunting challenges, the Nigerian walks without gaining very little. You, and you, therefore, you, the vision is there, but always the challenge is the execution. You know and why I for agree? that resilience, the newspaper appoints the ordinary Nigerian as his man of the year. <laughs> you know why I agree with that? Why do you because agree just, with that? Just, just yesterday, somewhere in Iran, you, you find there was a protest, you know, principally because of a, a fuel increase, slight increase in, in fuel, and, you know, the whole people took to the streets. You're talking in, about Iran. In Algeria, in Morocco, simple <laughs> increase in bread price turns the whole country into yes, confusion. So, so I the think resilience th of Nigerians to, is... To the ordinary Nigerian, you Yes, mean. but okay, we should so. not be pushed to the world too far. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Raya, we would yes. like to thank you once laughing. again yes, uh, for you. reviewing and, and uh, of course, spending your, your time with us this uh, holiday uh, first uh, in the year. We'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Then. All right, are uh, you watching Good Morning Nigeria? We'll take a short break. When we come back, you know what we will be talking about. Stay with us. It's that time of the year when we appreciate all those that mean so much to us. Our sponsors, our clients, government at all levels, corporate bodies, advertisers, religious bodies, civil society groups, political parties, businesses, and above all, you, our esteemed viewers. Together, we made 2017 great. Together, we shall make 2018 even greater. That's why we say thank you, Merry Christmas, and a prosperous New Year. Hate speech is not a joke. It incites genocide and crimes against humanity. Most of Africa's civil wars are caused by hate speech from one tribe against another. We don't want it here. The Nigerian government stands firm against hate speech. I was distressed to notice that some of the comments, especially in the social media, have crossed our national red lines by daring to question our collective existence as a nation. This is a step too far. One nation bound in freedom. Peace and unity. Nigeria, one nation, one people. This is a public service announcement brought to you by NTA. The Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, in collaboration with the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture, the Made in Nigeria campaign. In the midst of unprecedented multiple challenges, our great country Nigeria, as Africa's largest economy, is surely marching on to a new era of all-round prosperity, especially through re-engineered and diversified economy. Powerfully driven by the change agenda of President Muhammadu Buhari, GCFR, we will patronize local entrepreneurs. We will promote the manufacturing powerhouses. Our objective is to make Nigeria a new manufacturing hub. It is not time to complain. It is time to join the campaign. It is time for economic recovery, growth and diversification of our economy. By Made in Nigeria.
Shola. Shola. Come on, help me. You need to learn. But I'm more interested in drawing. How are you going to be part of the business if you don't learn? You just don't understand. Morning. Anyone for some Lipton? The rich taste of Lipton awakens body and mind. Let me have a look at your drawings. Son, these designs are amazing. Lipton Yellow Label Tea. Awaken to what really matters. All right, welcome back. Now, about 30 minutes ago, less than that, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria made a nationwide broadcast this first day uh, of January 2018. Let's now join Adamu Sambo for a background report to our conversation this morning. This year promises to be far better in our quest for change. In line with this change, President Muhammad Buhari said Nigeria's stock of infrastructure will be significantly increased in order to achieve global competitiveness. With regards to railways, for instance, he said ambitious targets have been set by government towards ensuring that major towns and cities across Nigeria are linked by functional modern rail systems. This is to give an enormous boost to social and economic life of the people. The Abuja Kaduna route will be boosted by additional rolling stock next Thursday and will be able to handle one million commuters annually. By the end of 2021, the two ends will be joined so that we will have standard gauge railway across the main north-south trading route. On roads infrastructure, the president said government is currently undertaking repairs and maintenance of 44 roads across the six geopolitical zones, while 25 other major highways will be funded under the 100 billion naira Sukuk facility. Each geopolitical zone will benefit by an equal amount of 16.67 billion naira. He mentioned Oyo Ogbomosho, Yenagua Otoke, Bayel Sapam, Inugu Potako dual carriageway, dualization of Abuja, Lokoja Beni Road, as well as Kaduna Maiduguri Road, as some of those to receive special attention, while the Abuja Kaduna Kano Road, now approved for reconstruction, will be completed in 2019. Several moribund power projects, the president said, have also been revived with generation now reaching 7,000 megawatts. And at last, the landmark Mambila hydroelectric power project is taken off after being on a drawing board for over 40 years. These massive popular works should spearhead the recovery and lead millions back to employment. The government is slowly stabilizing the economy. We have got to get used to discipline and direction in economic management. The days of business as usual are numbered. President Buhari described as gratifying that agriculture has picked up contributing to the government's efforts to restructure the economy, saying rice imports will stop this year. The Nigerian leader also touched on the ongoing debate about restructuring, expressing the firm belief that the problems of Nigeria are more to do with process than structure. However, there is a strong case for a closer look at the cost of government and for the public services long used to extravagance, waste and corruption to change for the better. And as the electionary season approaches, the president called for collective action towards strengthening the nation's democracy and entrenching the rule of law by playing politics with civility, decorum and in a constitutional manner. I must reassure my fellow citizens the security of life and property is still top of our government's agenda. We have since beaten Boko Haram. Tighter police measures and swift and severe punishment for those proved to be engaged in kidnapping are on the way. And I am more determined than ever to serve you to the best of my ability. President Muhammad Buhari is, however, saddened that the Christmas and New Year celebrations have been marred by fuel crisis and promised to get to the root 
of what he calls the collective blackmail of Nigerians towards avoiding a recurrence. And I wish everyone a happy we are. And indeed, we wish the president equally a prosperous and a happy new year. Now, that was uh, Adam Osambo, our state house correspondent, giving us a background to our conversation. We are now being joined in the studio by the senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Garba Shehu. We're very glad you could join us this morning. And uh, Thank happy you. New year to happy you. New Year to you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you very much for happy this. Uh -huh. All right. Well, we also have with us uh, a lady. She's a lawyer and a political commentator, Aisha Waziri. Many thanks to you for finding time to Thank join you us for also. having me and Happy New Year. All right. Um, also to join in the conversation, mm. this time around from our Kaduna uh, Network Center, is a constitutional lawyer and public affairs analyst. I'd like to welcome Festus Okoye to the program this morning. Happy New Year to you, Festus Okoye. Happy New Year to you, Festus Okoye. Uh, same to you. Happy New Year to all Nigerians. And also in Ibadan Network Center would like to bring on a public affairs analyst, Jide Ojo. Uh, of course, Jide is a familiar face on the program. Jide Ojo, Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you, Blessing. Happy New Year to you, Claire. Happy New Year to you, Nigerians. I must start. Uh, that was in Jide. Uh, you're actually like a ballet. A chief in that uh, kingdom this morning. Maybe, maybe we should be saying card. No, just ballet. <laughs> just ballet. It's All right, Jide, uh, Mr. Ojo, thank you very much. Uh, really look good. Uh, first day in the new year, brand new you. Now, the president broadcast is heartwarming. What exactly are your thoughts about the uh, broadcast this morning? Well, for me, I, I think the president uh, has just given Nigeria his scorecard for the past two and a half years of his administration and uh, it's very hard to me that some progress are being made even though he also did acknowledge the challenges that nigerians face and um, he has promised to do something very drastic about the challenges which is the hallmark of a good leader uh, we all do acknowledge that nigeria is not a failed state we are making snake paves progress, even though what many of us would have preferred is a fast track approach to governance. But uh, I mean, it's very hard to me that Nigeria is going to exit uh, rice importation this year. The 12 weeks marching order to FEMA to fix some critical roads across the country is also a very welcome development. Uh, that impacts right directly on the average Nigerians, masses like you and I. And also the issue that the president touched on, the issue of security, that they are going to, the administration is going to take very drastic action against kidnapping. Uh, it's, it's also another welcome development because you recall that even on the New Year Eve, or some valid two days to New Year, a lawmaker in uh, Takum in Taraba was kidnapped right in his house. And it has become a, a norm uh, for people to be picked up at random, whether on the road or in their homes. So it is good that the president is doing something about the security challenge. It's also good that um, he has encouraged us to play politics with civility. We do know that this is an election, uh, more or less an election year, because election for 2019 will be happening uh, in February 2019. So this is actually the year when politics will be majorly played. This is the, when we will have the campaigns, the nominations, the primaries, and all of that. So he has asked uh, his fellow politicians to play by the rules and to play with civility. So that is, that is also very encouraging. He has acknowledged the suffering of Nigerians about the fire crisis, and he has promised to get to the root of the crisis and this severely with all those who are involved in, um, in causing and um, inflicting hardship on Nigerians. So for me, these are very uh, heartwarming news in the new year. It is good that the president is talking to us, and, uh, is, is back on his, his feet after spending almost half of last year on his bed. It is good that he's celebrating this year with us in flesh and blood and that he has, prom he has promised a lot of reforms, a lot of 
infrastructural development, a lot of um, attention to governance. And uh, we, we hope that he keeps to his promise uh, as he has pledged. All right. Uh, Otumba Jide Ojo. Bale. Oh, sorry, Bale Jide Ojo. Uh, of course. <laughs> Joining us uh, via Skype from uh, Ibadan uh, right there. Now, of course, for you, uh, Mr. President's uh, speech uh, today is a hallmark of a good leader, uh, but you would prefer a uh, track approach to governance. Uh, let's now bring in uh, Barista Festus Okoye from our Kaduna Network Center. Barista we would like you to please uh, uh, share your own perspective on the president's uh, uh, broadcast this morning, probably one of the longest so far. Yes, I, I think that the first broadcast uh, this morning um, was forward-looking. Uh, it shows that uh, he understands the issues and challenges of governance, especially at this critical moment. Um, it shows that Nigerians can look forward to 2018, 2019, and 2020 with a lot of hope and optimism. And that is why he addressed some of the, what he calls the issues of critical infrastructure uh, that has been bedeviled in this country for a long time. The whole issue about the railways, uh, he has um, assured Nigerians uh, that the issue of railways will be uh, tackled headlong and, um, uh, and also that there will be rapid intervention in terms of road construction in different parts of Nigeria. And I think that that is a, a, a heartwarming. And it also shows that the administration uh, is not just looking at the immediate, but it is also uh, looking uh, towards, um, you, know, you know, a long-term project that will um, uh, put Nigeria in a very, very stable um, uh, condition. Uh, the president has also talked about this whole issue about um, uh, uh, restructuring the issue of... Um, uh, elections and the issue of uh, not exploiting ethnicity and religion uh, in the course of um, electioneering campaign. Now, I think that one thing that we must get clear is that with 2018 here, electioneering campaign has started. So I think that one of the biggest challenges we are going to have is whether the president will be focused in terms of delivering on some of these issues he has outlined or whether the people are distracted by the drums of political campaigns and the drums of, uh, of politics. So how the president balances uh, some of these issues and some of these challenges will determine whether the people, or the Nigerian people, will enjoy the benefits of some of the infrastructural issues that the uh, president has um, put on ground. And I think it's also good that he has really acknowledged the fact that um, the economy is slowly picking up, have acknowledged the sufferings the Nigerian people are going through in terms of this fair crisis. Now, I think that, as, as Jide pointed out, it is a mark of a good leader that he has acknowledged the suffering of the Nigerian people. But the one thing is very clear. Most government officials and people in government believe that Abuja and Lagos constitutes Nigeria. And I think that that is a huge mistake. The moment they clear the fuel queues in Abuja and clear the fuel queues in Lagos, uh, they, they believe that they have solved the problem. But if you look at what is going on in other countries, I drove from my house uh, to the studio this morning, there are very serious problems and there are very serious challenges. So I think that the president must be decisive in terms of dealing with some of these critical issues. Nobody can assure me that the fuel issue took us by surprise because this is always the pattern. So if we did not take measures to tame some of these issues, uh, it, it, it seems to me that we didn't do well at all. So I think that the president should be decisive and intervene defensively in relation to this fair crisis. And the way the president intervenes in this matter, we find the way Nigerians would look at the presidency in this 2018. But for me, Looking at the president's speech um, holistically, I think that it is forward-looking, and it shows uh, that the president understands the issues and the challenges of governance, especially at this critical time. And he has also empathized with Nigerians in terms of their suffering and has assured us uh, that um, he is determined to improve the lot of the Nigerian people and that he's working hard to improve our circumstances. And I think that that is um, 
that is uh, really good to hear. As we enter this 2018, we are entering it with a lot of hope and optimism that our president is up and doing and that our president has assured us that he is going to stabilize the economy and he's going to uh, deal with critical issues decisively. Okoye, we'll come back to both yourself and uh, Mr. Ojo in the course of the discussion. Let's bring in uh, Aisha Waziri. She's also a lawyer and no, a political commentator. Mm -hmm. Heartwarming, forward-looking. Those are the comments from the mm -hmm. other gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are your own concerns? Um, I think, first and foremost, um, I think uh, Nigerians will be happy to see the president in, in this shape, in this form. I think uh, his health was a great concern to a lot of Nigerians. Um, it looks like he's, um, he's gone 10 years younger. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'd love to know the president's secrets. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's good to see that. Um, it's important to have a healthy, strong leader. So that's, um, I'm happy about that. I think overall the speech was very good, um, especially compared to the previous speeches that are usually very um, too, too general. This was very specific. And I noted the, 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 the way, the time he took meticulously talking about each project in detail, um, the railway, all the towns it was going to. I think Nigerians would connect with that because when you're specific, for instance, you say you're going to Calabar, you're going to, you know, Katsina, you're going here and there and everything, it, it feels good. So I really like the, the detail in the speech. Um, the, the, um, the apology about the fuel um, scarcity was in order. Um, I think uh, it, was, it, was, it was warm, it was good. Um, I did expect, however, that you would have talked more about the um, issue of the PIB, perhaps, and um, that the reforms that need to be taken, you know, um, the oil sector, you know, uh, and maybe deregulation, because we all know that um, there's still an element of um, subsidy, there's still some government, government still has its hands inside the oil sector, and I think the thinking generally is that hands off and just let it, um, you know, but government being a bit uh, on the uh, leaning towards the left, it's not so liberal to let go. So um, that's that. The other thing was the issue of the restructuring. I think um, pushing it under the carpet isn't going to solve the problem. Um, I think the people who are talking about it, they are genuine concerns. And there's some of the things that are being talked about, I don't think, you know, um, uh, 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 are good as it were. But I think that there are some issues that um, we need to look at. For instance, I would say something like um, the, the, the formula, the revenue sharing formula. I think that's something that, you know, federal getting uh, 49, um, 51 percent, 49 to states and federal, uh, local governments. I think strengthening local governments and um, also issues to do with the election. I know we do have, um, we are beginning to have free and fair elections, but there are issues to do with governance. There are serious governance issues, especially local government, especially the state governors and the way that they run the states. I know this is maybe not something maybe you talk about at a, you know, federal, I mean, sorry, at a New Year's speech, you know, but um, it would have been good to say, you know, we, we, that this is things, things are they're going to be looked at. Um, quickly, then, the issue of um, the president's people. Um, president is perceived as having a very weak team. Um, and he's got these fantastic plans um, and everything, but I'm sorry, I have to say this, um, Mr. President, your team, people do not think your team can deliver. I'm sorry I have to say that. People believe his economic team is weak. Um, that's something that I would have loved to have, you know, um, maybe in the process he went in, when he's going to implement, the president will actually get people who can actually deliver on these promises. The economic team, people are not very confident of that, you know. Um, so they've done well. I think they can do better, you know. The final thing is the issue of uh, police reforms. I know security, you know, in terms of, you know, the combatants, the insurgents, you know, they've been suppressed. But internal security in terms of our, you know, day-to-day, -day, you know, um, the police are getting, you know, very, very weak as well. So I'd love to, you know, have heard him mm. say police reform is another area that has to be focused on. It's really important. Right. So that's my take. Thank All you. Right, <laughs> All right. Let's okay. bring in uh, uh, <coughs> Madam Garibat Shehu. What, what do you have to say to some of the issues that she's raised and what exactly makes this broadcast different from the arrest, the previous ones before it? Well, I, this is different because I think this is the first time the president has himself then given a glowing assessment of his own administration. And he has given glimpses of some of the gigantic major you know, projects that, uh, that the administration 
wants to do. And, uh, and, and uh, as everyone has observed rightly, he began his speech with something of um, an apology for the pri uh, fuel crisis situation because it has spoiled Christmas for so many. As he said, Christmas was nothing, was everything but merry and happy and that something will be done about it. And uh, I think that we should look to the coming days because um, as some of the concerns uh, you know, been expressed here, whether something would actually be then, weakness of team and all of that. I, I think by tomorrow, there will be a big conference in the villa. Under one roof, you are going to have everyone involved in the oil sector the ministry, NNPC, you know, the, the importers, distributors, labor unions and all. The president wants to get to the bottom of all of these things and he's going to resolve it. And you know that the National Assembly itself has also commissioned a public hearing on Thursday it will hold on all of these issues. So everyone is serious. And, and you know, talking about railway, the president would be in Kaduna on Thursday. He's going to commission you know, two new locomotives and 10 new coaches that would help to transport, as he said in the speech, about one million people within this year. So it's, 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 there is going to be a lot of action that will follow. So much is happening, you know, power, you know. The general average you have in many cities in the country is a daily average of 18 hours of supply. This is a significant improvement. 5,155 megawatts of electricity delivered to homes, as he said. And this is even short of what is available because generation and transmission has hit 7,000. We have doubled availability of power available to Nigerians from May 25 when the president took power, you know, to this time. So, it's, 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 it's uh, then fair and reasonable that the president would dwell so much on the work that he's doing on infrastructure. Because infrastructure, of course, is the bedrock upon which economic progress, everything will follow. But in addition to that, it also provides millions of jobs for our teeming population. And so these are some of the critical elements, you know, embodied in the policy in the campaign promises that the president has himself made. Security is there, Niger Delta, you know, all of the progress that has been made, the stability of the national currency, the Naira, you know. So really the, the economy is, uh, is, 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 I don't want to say strong, but really is moving in the di right direction. I sure was you raised, raised some, some points. Is it that those aspects, we know that of course, infrastructure is quite uh, critical. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we, we've, seen, we've seen plans you know, to, to, to boost uh, our infrastructural development. But what about the issues that Aisha raised? Is it that they were, also, they were considered less important to be talked about in the, in the broadcast? Well, she said, expressed concern about strength of the economic team. An economic team that has been able to pull this country out of recession. And I want to say in so, sh in so, in so, so short a period, it cannot be described as, as being not too up to it. This country had five months of negative growth. And given you know, the kind of spending and all of the efforts and the skills and the competence that has gone into it, this country is going to achieve growth in the same year. One, one person, 1 1.4, whatever it is. And Nigeria is targeting 4.5, 3 to 4% you know, of, uh, of uh, growth uh, next year. Issue of restructuring that she mentioned. The president's view is that, th that this process is more of the process. That problem with the, is more with the process than the issue of structure. And it is very easy to understand this. We are a democracy. And there are institutional structures that support democracies all over the world. If you have a parliament, a parliament is, 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 is a repository, is the custodian of the sovereignty of the people. 
you have an elected parliament. Why don't you want to work with the parliament? As we speak now, you know that the, 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 the parliament is steeped in the issue of constitution amendment. All of these things about local council autonomy, you know, judicial independence, and, and even, you know, state creation hasn't passed, all of these things. However, I think that this country has, has developed an insatiable desire of the elite for conference. Hardly has there been any administration in the country that has not held one political conference, national conference, constitutional conference, or the other, whatever nomenclature. Now, if conferences hold the solution to the problem, we would have found a solution a long time ago. But as it is now, people are still asking for more and more of these things. Do you want a parallel parliament? Mm. That's a problem. So I think that the president said, go to the parliament. Take your cases there. Work with it. If you think that the parliament is not good enough, is not delivering, that's, the, 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 the democracy is a self-correcting process. Four years down the line, all of the parliamentarians will present themselves for re-election. If you think you can do a better job, go and present yourself. But the okay. problem is a lot of the noisy people, I'm sorry to use the word noisy, is they are unelectable. Let, let's pause it for a while. And uh, since you're on, on the issue of restructuring, we'd better get on with restructuring. And that's why we're going to uh, Ibadan. Jide, um, the president said the problem uh, of Nigeria is, is not uh, a problem of structure, but that of process. What's your take on that? I, I disagree with Mr. President on that count. Uh, he cannot, on his own, think for 180 million Nigerians, many of whom are pushing for the alteration and restructuring and amendment of this structure that is not, that is highly dysfunctional. We have a highly dysfunctional federalism. So much so that even our lawmakers, have agreed that there is a need for fiscal federalism. The party, or progressive party, in its manifesto, actually promised Nigerian devolution of powers. They promised Nigerian state police. Why are they re-energy at this point? Are we saying that the party did not think through before making that promises and pledges to Nigeria that they would devolve power when they get to government? Are we saying that over 500 Nigerians, eminent Nigerians that gathered in Abuja in 2014 to fashion now the 2014 National Conference Report and came up with over 600, uh, 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 about 600 proposals. And I will say that they are stupid. They don't know what they are talking about. I, I think the president cannot, in his own wisdom, think for the rest of us to say that our uh, problem is not restructuring, but uh, just that of process. I think it's a problem of process and structure. That is my own personal opinion. We have a problem with both the process as well as the structure, and we need to do something about it. If people are feeling marginalized in a country this big, and they want self-determination, and you are not looking into their grouses and grievances. And you are saying that, no, uh, it's just about process. Even the process that we are talking about has been highly questioned because we see a situation of lopsidedness in terms of uh, uh, dividends of democracy. And we cannot wish all of these uh, or grievances, all of these discontents that some part of Nigerians have, we cannot wish it away. So for me, I think the president, if he wants to subject it to debate, it's just that I, I wouldn't call for another round of debate after having 2014 National Conference. And after the party in the lead up to 2015 general elections promised Nigeria devolution of powers, I will not say that in, a, in the eve of another election, another general election, we should go for another round of debate. It's not going to help us. APC was just setting, setting up a committee to now think through what they mean by restructuring. 
It is very mischievous of the party. I think Nigerians desire restructuring. We can fix the process, no doubt, but more importantly, we can alter the structure to make it more functional so that we do away with this dysfunctional system. Look at local government autonomy that people are agitating for. If the local government is working perfectly, as we currently have it, would there be that agitation for independent, I mean, for, for, for funding autonomy and administrative autonomy for local government? I happen to have gone to a primary school that is that was established by uh, Ibadan Municipal Council in the in the 50s. But today, many of those schools are no longer existing. Where they exist, they just exist in there. No, no structure, no furniture, nothing. So we cannot continue to have our system in a very dysfunctional manner as we currently have it. It's a problem of both the process as well as the structure, and we must fix both. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Bale Judio Joe. Yeah, we'll get back to you. Now, let's uh, get back to uh, constitutional lawyer, Festus Okoye. Uh, Claire asked the question, is part of the president broadcast, process, structure. But how much of uh, entrenching uh, this aspect of rule of law for our democracy to act in what we practice or what we have come to hold on to, whatever the system of government has been, how much of it have we been able to, uh, to make work uh, since uh, democratic uh, dispensation? I think that uh, part of our problem is our confusion uh, relating to whether we want to do things constitutionally or whether we want to use extrajudicial and extraconstitutional means of um, uh, coming to uh, certain conclusions. Uh, I, be I believe that we can achieve our goals while remaining within the ambit of constitutionalism. And I say this because the process, the, 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 the process and procedure of restructuring must be political, constitutional, and legal. And I say this because the framers of the Nigerian constitution did not assume an omnipotent power. They embedded within the context of the constitution the processes and procedures of how we can alter the constitution to meet changing needs and changing uh, 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 dynamics of the society. So if we want to change these dynamics of certain things, we must be political and we must be constitutional. We may, must be political in the sense that there are certain things that you must get, go out and get an aggregate view of Nigerians, get a consensus of Nigerians, get a buy-in of Nigerians before you can take it to the National Assembly. Because if you don't get the buy-in of Nigerians and you get to the National Assembly, there's a possibility that political considerations may dampen and alter whatever you want to do constitutionally. So I believe that there are very, very serious challenges with our federation. The challenge of local government autonomy. Course across party lines. Uh, the, 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 the governors belonging to the APC the governors belonging to the PDP, the governors belonging to ABGA, do not want local government autonomy. There is no two way about it. All of them are agreed. There is a consensus amongst them on this. So the issue now is, do we really want local governments in Nigeria, or do we want to abolish local governments so that we can have a revenue sharing formula that is, that is between the federal government and the state governments, and any state that wants to establish administrative units, that wants to establish um, uh, whatever structure it can go on and establish. The existing local governments in Nigeria are not working. We do not have local governments. What we have are appendages of the state governments, and we must be very, very clear about that. So, constitutionally and politically, we must deal with that particular issue. The issue of state creation is a very is a is, is a cumbersome process. We must deal with the issue of state creation and deal with it once and for all. So I think that there are very serious issues that we must deal with, both politically and constitutionally. Secondly, I agree that there is some form of disconnect and lack of cohesion in this regime. And the president must go back and re-energize the particular regime, not only the uh, the, the e e economic team. Sometimes we do not know who is speaking for the government. Sometimes we see 
top officials of the government fighting one another publicly and nobody calls them to order. So I think that one of the things the president must do for Nigerians is to take decisive action so that when an issue arises, Nigerians must know who is speaking for the government. And when serious senior government officials are fighting publicly, the president must intervene and stamp his feet and say enough is enough. There must be some level of cohesion in this particular regime. And I think that, that is, these are some of the things Nigerians are agitating for, and these are the, some of the things Nigerians want to happen. Professor Sokoye, thank you. We've raised quite a number of issues, but let's uh, get the views of uh, uh, Aisha. Aisha, well, we can achieve, you know, our, our, our desires within the ambit of the law, but the president, uh, you know, buttressed his, his own view uh, by giving the analogy of Lagos State, what is happening in Lagos State, where religion, ethnicity, politics and all that, according to him, have been successfully internalized. Well, I mean, absolutely. Um, Lagos is, is a very, very good, is a model um, poster. The, the entire know. Southwest, yes. Well, Southwest, especially. Mm. Well, actually, yes. Um, I think, yes, that is correct. But where you have um, states where it's not working out as well as it is, then, um, in my opinion, to say that, you know, you should be like that or be like them is not really giving answers. I think... Um, something has to be done a bit more than just saying you should be like them because they've got it right. Um, you should come up with or get your team. This is where this issue of team, I'm sorry, I have to keep saying that. Um, there should be somebody that is going to focus on, on that type of, uh, those issues. These are soft issues to do with national, national identity, to do with unity. A leader has to, is responsible for, 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 for the cohesion and for, for, for uniting people for creating that national identity, it's actually the responsibility of the leader. So um, while I agree with him that yeah, Lagos is doing a good job, but how can, what, can, what suggestions or what is this government doing in order to improve and get this brotherhood and the harmony? But it also yes. behoves the, 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 uh, the, the, the mm. leaders at the state level to also, you know... Well, yes, yes, so for instance, I mean, you could say, yes, the states, um, you, could, you could convene tra traditional rulers, the religious leaders, the state governors, convene um, or, or encourage them to talk, to dialogue, or do something, you know, in that area, you know, to kind of create the, the, the harmony that we are looking for. So um, I do understand that it's not, the president is a very um, processed person, and he likes to keep within his purview, and I understand that, you know, but there's also a way that you can, you can play it around and sort of in, Push, push the thing to happen, you know, without being the person who is going to be in, in the forefront um, from the back, leading from the back in this direction. But I want to quickly say something about this issue of the economy and us exiting the, 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 the recession, as, um, as the senior special assistant pointed out. Um, I, will, I will say that, yes, the, the, the government has done well, but um, the, the oil price um, increase were about 60-something now. 65. Yes, I think that actually helped to get us out of recession. So um, I don't mean to <laughs> you know, well, take it away from them. As people are saying, it's all there. Yes. Um, no, but to say that it's the economic team that got us out of the recession, they were helped by the oil prices. So uh, that is, I'm not really convinced that the economic team... Um, are, are the people who did this? You know what I mean. So anyway, that's, um, uh, yeah, that, uh, you're, you're entitled to your yes, own opinion. Yes, that's that's just that's area. just a response. Okay, let's move. Let's yeah. move on to other uh, other areas. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Malangar Bashir, of course, we looked at uh, another area which is talking about uh, power. Now, the president said power generation has reached seven thousand megawatt, but the discos, that's the distribution companies now, can only distribute just a little over five thousand uh, megawatt. How is government uh, trying to address this lack of capacity? Please, just allow me a minute or two. Let me just uh, respond to Jide. Because uh, I think the lamentations are sufficiently alarming to warrant a quick response. Uh, the APC and the President did not fail to keep their promises on matters of devolution of power and restructuring and so on. So what happened? The issue is the process. If you want local government autonomy, go to the Parliament. The Parliament is working on that. In fact, Senate House of they already approved that. And and there are other issues of marginalization and all of that. Like uh, for instance, uh, fiscal federalism that you mentioned. You know that it was it was defeated in the Senate. But somebody needed to have gone there to look 
lobby. That's how the political system works. You go and lobby. Even the president does that in order to get his bills through. So, and it will be wrong. What would you say of President Muhammad Buhari if he wakes up tomorrow, man, and he says, well, I've created uh, this, I've altered the constitution this way or that way. When they call him a dictator, he doesn't even have the powers under the constitution. So that's, that's the whole point. Use the democratic process. And I think, uh, you know, uh, 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 so like, I mean, first, point exactly, point point exactly, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it can be done. Nothing, nothing is, okay, is so beyond. Let's, so let's take a look at the question now. Uh, now, uh, now, the uh, thing is that issue of the real uh, infrastructure. Now, uh, people are wondering where, where the funding is coming from. Well, let me say this: that you know that uh, I think that this government inherited a messy situation with the sale of the discourse. But these things have been done. They have met the requirements of the law, and so therefore perhaps nobody wants to really upset the apple cart. But you know that there's simply the lack of capacity. We lose about 2,000 megawatts of power because they cannot absorb it. They cannot take it to the people. So how do you so, to change the dynamic? Now, the, the federal government has just done one thing now. They have introduced a direct sale. You can bulk purchase power if you, as community, as an organization, and so on. You can go directly to distributor and buy. You can bypass you know, the distributors who, who most essentially improve capacity, expand it, and bring more meters and all of that. So that's where we are now. But uh, these things have to grow hand in hand. Mm. Yeah. All right, uh, let, let's still on the issue of power. Jide, uh, I'm sure you witnessed the drama that unfolded recently when, of course, the uh, discourse, you know, gave notice of a force majeure. And that arose as a result of the, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 the... the directive given by you know government uh, over the eligibility uh, eligible customer regulatory uh, directives do you think that this is a sector that can really have the capacity to you know generate uh, and transmit uh, steady f uh, electricity for nigerians well uh, you know we have moved over the time from bcn to nepa to pcn now we have calibrated and privatized the entire uh, entire uh, electricity chain. Uh, we now have uh, the Genco's generating companies, the, the transmission company of Nigeria, the distribution companies, even energy board purchasing company and the rest. But it has served uh, very little comfort for an average Nigerians who still largely live in darkness. Many communities are not even connected to power to the national grid as we speak. It is at me, no doubt, that the electricity generation has improved. But what about transmission? And what about distribution? And what about affordability to an average Nigeria? I, in my part of Ibadan, I will acknowledge that over this festive period, energy has improved. I mean, they, 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 we, we were able to celebrate. Christmas and New Year with some hours of electricity, even though it's half current. I couldn't power many of the appliances in the home. But at least we saw something. If we cannot get fuel, at least we have public electricity supply to see ourselves in the room. But the point is this. Nigeria deserves a better deal. We have been celebrating increment in the generation. But the transition lines are still very weak, and they need to be fixed. We still have a whole issue about estimated billings. Many Nigerians are still not, uh, 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 have still not gotten uh, uh, meters. And metering has become a very sticky issue for the past years, so much so that we still are being served with estimated billings. And for some of us, at my house in Abuja, I had to buy my own personal meter. When, after a long time, I couldn't get a uh, uh, meter for, uh, uh, they, they, kept, they kept sending me estimated bill. I had to buy a prepared meter, which is, which is not the right thing, which is not what they promised us. So I, I, I appreciate and congratulate government for improving in the generation, but we need to fix and strengthen the transmission lines so that we will not continue to have this energy loss uh, in transmission. And then I, I do hope 
that the money that the government, federal government and all its parasitas, all the distribution companies are, are paid. Because I recall that some months back, uh, Minister of Minister of Power Works and Housing actually uh, presented the memo to the Federal Executive Council uh, for payment of some billions of naira to these distribution companies. Uh, and I don't know whether they have gotten that money now, but they, they, the government needs to offset its own huge body, each, each debt that is being held this distribution company. And the National Energy Regulatory Company needs to be more alive to its responsibility to whip the airing discourse to line because they can continue to call for increase in tariff when the services are still very poor. I cannot use my own personal experience to judge what many other Nigerians all over the country experience because whether I like it or not, many Nigerians are still experiencing very poor power supply. And this call for increment in tariff is, is going to be starkly resisted by Nigerians because for you to even think about uh, increment in tariff, you must provide me uh, prepared meters. You must also improve services so that I will have there will be a moral justification for you to say that I should pay more rather than saying that the, uh, I should rather pay more so that you can serve me better. It's not the, it's not that way. It should be the other way around. Serve me better and I will pay more for the good services that I'm enjoying from you. So for me, Nigeria Electricity Regulatory Company needs to be more alive to its responsibility. All right, uh, Jude, <laughs> thank you. You are not alone. Uh, of course, uh, in parts of MNK where I live, that's uh, Maraba Nyanya Karu district, uh, we also run generator over the, during the first period. But let's get to uh, Kaduna. Festus, what do you have to say uh, to, of course, the issue of uh, power generation and distribution and uh, capacity to, you know, maintain steady supply of uh, power to Nigerians? Well, you see, the issue of power uh, transcends, uh, you know, it permeates every sector of the Nigerian economy. Unless that sector right, the other sectors will not improve. And, and if you also look at the constitution, some of the challenges we have now relates to the aberrations in relation to the way we have dealt with constitutional issues. The constitution is very, very clear that the government of Nigeria must be in control of the commanding heights of the economy, but can also allow the private uh, uh, sector to invest and also participate in the private in the in the in the major sectors of the economy. The problem and the challenge we have now it is the private sectors that are command uh, are controlling the heights of the economy, while the the government is only participating. In a, in a small way. And it, it is an aberration. It's unconstitutional. And when you have such a challenge, there is no way the government can really intervene and control the way things are when those who are in the private sector are not living up to expectation or when those in the private sector are trying to hold the economy hostage. So I think that the biggest challenge we have is that the government must intervene decisively and be in control of the situation in relation to power generation and power, and power distribution. It is one thing to have some of these issues on paper. It is another thing for the ordinary people to feel its impact. The truth of the matter is that the ordinary people are not feeling the impact of this power generation and power distribution issue. So some of the issues we put on the table are just esoteric to them and they don't feel it. If we have constant uh, electricity supply, the ordinary teller will we, we, we be in business. The people who are doing, uh, um, uh, the, the, the farmer will be in business. People who have small, small businesses will, will be in business. But as of today, we have very, very serious challenges with both power generation and power distribution. And I think that it is one sector that the government must really pay attention if we are going to get out of some of the economic challenges we have. Vice Minister Zokoye, still with you. I know we've talked. We'll take a look at uh, the pre-election year. Elections are coming, and the president preached uh, part of a potential threat uh, on issue of ethnicity and religion by politicians. Quickly uh, or briefly, now, what do we have on our hands, and what should be the challenge for everyone? 
Well, the, the challenge is that, one, our elections are getting better. But we must not take anything for granted. The president has said, let us not allow the issue of religion and the issue of ethnicity to dominate the political environment in 2018 and 2019. The president and his party must also lead by example. If they lead by example, by not exploiting ethnicity and by not exploiting religion, then they will have the moral right and the courage to deal with other political parties that may resort to ethnicity and religion in terms of political uh, uh, campaigns. But the truth of the matter is that religion and ethnicity as political variables have never taken us anywhere. They don't, religion does not put food on the table. And ethnicity as a variable does not put food on the table. So I think that Nigerians must set the agenda for 2018 and 2019. And that agenda must concentrate on issues around the economy, on issues around how we can make government work, whether it's the process or the structure. And the, it must also uh, uh, devolve on a team that, can, that is more forward-looking and a team that can lead us in the next 10, 20, and even 50 years. So I think that these are the things we should uh, concentrate on. But I think that the warning or the advice by the president is timely because religion and ethnicity are very explosive issues and they are very emotive issues and these are issues that can divert attention and lead to unnecessary uh, bloodbath and lead to unnecessary disturbances in different parts of the country. So politicians and the political elite must eschew issues around ethnicity and issues around religion and concentrate on those issues that are cohesive, the issues that unite us and pay, pay less attention on divisive and emotive issues that do not add any value to our political system and our political values and culture. Professor yeah. Sokoye, thank you. We've got so much to talk about, but of course we cannot exhaust mm -hmm. all the uh, uh, items and broadcasts this morning. But let me get back to uh, Garba Shehu, the president's uh, 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 spokesperson. Now, yesterday I was listening to a, a, a lawyer, uh, of course, and when asked between uh, the ruling party, APC, with regards to politics and, uh, and, and, and political development, uh, between the ruling government, government, APC, and the opposition, he says it's a Hobson's choice. And I also know that you responded by saying it's an understatement. So could you talk to us on what you meant by that? Well, uh, please, again, just a second, let me clear one hanging issue. You have very limited time to do that. Okay, because uh, I just, uh, petroleum is key to getting out of recession, but I believe that there are about three, four dozen other issues that are also factored into deciding whether we're in or out, mm. including agriculture, which has been performing uh, wonderfully. And, and uh, for God's sake, a lot of work is going on, power projects, so many of them. We have AFAM upgraded this year, uh, last year, this year they're upgrading. We have Katsina uh, wind power, we have a Zungeru, which is yeah, coming Mambila. on stream. Mm -hmm. We have Mambila, which has been approved, which is, been, is, is going to uh, st work will start this year, Kashimbila, Kaduna, so, so a, a lot of IPPs, including IPPs for selected universities in the country, a lot of work is going on. This. I think that this problem has to be, Nigerians must appreciate that there's a problem with people who will, who, who will call squatters. Squatters who have been given licenses for distribution and they're not doing a good job of it. And this country has to find a way of dealing with this problem. And, uh, and then, then the issue, issue of, uh, th that you raised, yes. The, 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 with regards to uh, aha, politics, yes. They said, there's, how can anybody say that kind of thing? Mm. All of these projects that the president is talking about, you know that for 10 years the PDP administration did not complete one single project. And oil sold for an average of 100 US dollars, pumping out 2.2 .2 million barrels per day. Why is all the money? And claim was that they spent it on food and fuel imports. Now food, we are going to stop rice this year, the president just announced it. So there can't be, there can't be, for PDP, in fact, even at, rhetorically, they never condemned corruption. They imbibed it, they, they made it thrive. Look at all of the things that EFCC is, with the huge convictions and the recoveries of assets and money, and people who say we are the same, well, they can't, these are apples and oranges. All right, all right, we can't be compared. One, quick one, uh, Mr. Mm. Uh, part of the broadcast, uh, for, for a tweet that came in now, says the president will not make any mention about unemployment. 
what will you be doing that? No, 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 of, no, no. Of course, we, we, no, there we, is. Which, which NBS I said mm -hmm. is almost 18.8 percent. No, no, no. When he when he mentioned the issue of infrastructure, mm. he said it will lead to the creation of millions of jobs, hey, well and that is absolutely correct, because because all of this construction, look, a lot of them had been laid off. They had shut down, including Julius Berger. Ten, more than 10,000 employees of Julius Berger had been laid off. People are being called back to work. 97 construction companies will get money in January. But people are, well, and, people and they will remobilize. To the administration, is this not coming too uh, late? Well, uh, the thing is that the, the government had a lot of things to contend with. The challenges, in, in, we inherited an economy that was, that was more reborn. You have to wake it up. You have to revive it. Bring it out of the hole, you know, for it to even support the kind of policies of the administration. Okay, let's pause you. Uh, Aisha, with regards to the political spectrum, do you think that the ruling party has a firm grips on it? Um, meaning that the APC is in control and they can come back to power? Is that what you mean? No, well, uh, how, <laughs> how, how has, you know, with, with regards to, you know, given a fair playing ground, you know, level playing ground for participation and... and Being and, able to change yes. the dynamics as we want it to be in Nigeria. Politically, yes. Um, All right. Well, it's actually almost a one-party state that we have now with the PDP going down and everything. So PD, um, everybody's moved to APC. Everybody's... Um, okay, let's just say that it's still fluid. And um, I can't say that um, the APC is getting its act together and uh, especially with the president now taking a firm control. I think last year we had the issue of, you know, who's, going, who's in charge, what's going to happen. But the, the clarity now, I mean, we can see that the president is in charge, he's taking control. I love the speech because he's showing that, okay, I'm actually back and I'm in charge. So that's really, really good. Um, so yeah, I think APC is um, politically, you know, <laughs> what, what, what's the word you use? <laughs> I'm still trying to. <laughs> All right. We have won every important election from 2015 to now. Oh, and so. equity. All right, lady, uh, lady and gentlemen, I'm, I'm afraid we, we can't take any more questions uh, because um, uh, we've run out of time really we would just uh, like to appreciate of course we've got some tweets uh, that have come in they, they've been They're running, running. Uh, on the screen and uh, this one is from uh, okay Udo, and it says uh, it's uh, the ritual pre pre presentation of the president's new year speech it's uh, interesting that the railways project is uh, of course uh, on its uh, uh, agenda and uh, you know our twitter handle as always at ntagmn mm -hmm. and um, that's still coming from uh, okay those twitter it says um, you know past administration is that nothing is ever said of the total money recovered from the looted uh, treasury and what it's been used for claire i'd like to sum up this end of discussion with mm -hmm. uh, what's the press part of the president's speech and he said great nations are built by enterprising people who turn their mm -hmm. hands to anything that circumstances dictate. I think for every one of us, we need to put on our thinking cap and help the president achieve that which he has said to do. And uh, everything definitely will work well for us. Just the same way we'll build our homes. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much, uh, Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity. Thank you very much. We also would like to appreciate Aisha Waziri, political commentator and also a lawyer. Appreciation also to uh, constitutional lawyer and public affairs analyst Festo Zokoi and certainly not the least, uh, Bale in the Bado studio. Join us via Skype, Jide Ojo. It was a great time having the four of you on the program this morning. <laughs> Happy New Year once again. Uh, now to our complimentary segment, we'll take a look at sports. The Nigerian